Hi friends, how are you all doing? My name is August, this is Cozy Rosie Reads, and today my dad and I are traveling to Saugatuck, Michigan, which has this massive antique mall. I've taken you all along there with me several times on this channel, and we're going back today. I'm so excited, it's gonna be so fun. I haven't been there in a very long time. But we're just gonna like walk around Saugatuck, look at some books, look at some vintage goodies, some antique stuff, and just have a really good time. So I'm gonna take you all along with us. I'm hoping hoping to find a book there because we are bringing some lawn chairs to go sit in a park by the waterfront and read for a little bit. Luckily my dad is also a big book nerd so we're just gonna like sit and read outside but I'm hoping I need to find a book. That's the goal. So before we can sit and relax and enjoy the outdoors I find a book and I'm gonna start it on the spot. Unheard of. <laughs> I have not done that in so long but that's the goal for today because I'm not in a reading slump necessarily. I just like really wanna find something new that's gonna immediately attract me to read it and feel drawn. So that is the goal for today, is to find one book and to start it today while we're out and about. But thank you so incredibly much for being here, friends. I hope you enjoy it. Just a little one day outing vlog. I think it'll be fun. It is a beautiful day outside. I think it's gonna get up to like 80 degrees today and I'm so stoked. So let's go ahead and hit the trail. I hope you all are doing really well. <laughs>
Hi friends, I'm back home <laughs> and I am exhausted. You know when it's like the first few like nice-ish days outside and you spend the whole day outside in the sunshine, like slow walking around, that takes out a mass amount of energy. And I like, <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm so tired now, but in like the best way. And like, I'm just like sleepy and like warm and lethargic. And like, it was just so nice outside. It was so nice spending time with my dad at the antique mall and then going to a little local bookstore in Saugatuck. And we sat by the water and to no surprise of mine, I actually didn't freaking read anything because my dad and I were just like talking the entire time, which is not a surprise. Every time we're together, it's like, oh yeah, we should sit and read. And then we end up chatting the entire time, which I'm very grateful for. It was so nice. I just love hanging out with my dad. It was so nice little road trip. Um, I wanted to do a quick little haul and show you what I did get though. So it'll be pretty brief. Um, so the first thing I got at the antique mall was actually this vintage t-shirt, which I'm in love with. It's so cool. I don't know when circa, but this logo label itself just feels very, very nineties to me. So got that. And then I got a jean jacket, like a denim jacket. Every time I go thrifting, I try to find like my perfect jean jacket and I've never been able to find it. But I found this one, uh, which is V cute, but I didn't notice. I like pulled it out and then I was like, oh, I found a jacket. And my dad was like, what's on the back? Gap, um, which is fine. I don't hate it, but it's just definitely not moi. <laughs> It's definitely not me. So surprisingly, I am actually wearing color today. Normally I wear like all black, if you know me at all. Yeah, so that's that. So what I'm thinking, now let me know friends, like, is this a limited edition thing? Do I keep the back? Otherwise, what I'm thinking is this t-shirt is freaking really, really big on me. The collar is really worn and stretched, like really, really wide. So I'm thinking it would be kind of cool, right Winston? to cut the pattern off of this shirt and then sew it on the back of this because that's way more my vibe. That's way more my style. Even though I look like a very preppy like spring thing today, normally I'm not as like springy and colorful. What do you think? Let me know because I don't know. Is this like limited edition? Is this vintage? Should I keep this embroidery? It's very nice. It's just not me. I don't like wearing labels at all. Um, so it just makes me like feel really weird. Unfortunately, I did not find any books at the antique mall, which was kind of a bummer. There were a few that I was looking at that seemed kind of interesting, but definitely not for the price because I'm a frugal girl. I'm very frugal and like I did not feel good spending like 15 bucks on one book, especially if it's used not in the best condition. I don't really want to do that. So we went to this little bookstore in Saugatuck called The Book Nook, which is super cute. I love that place. Um, they have a very limited selection of like brand new books. Majority of it is used, which is awesome. So the first thing I picked up is The Summer She Was Underwater by Jen Michalski or Michalski. So definitely in the summertime, I look for a way more like DWM, literary fiction, like just a little bit more summer feelings. And how can you, this is the most summer cover I've ever seen. And it follows a, our main character who is named Sam and she's a young novelist and she spent the 4th of July weekend with her family. And it's been 20 years since she's been there with her family. So they go back and once they're at this cabin, they have to confront a chaotic history of mental illness, alcoholism and physical violence and struggle to find perspective in the pulse of things familiar and respite from the shame of the taboo relationship that courses through her. Ow! He just bit me for literally no re- I'm petting you. He's chaotic. As she does so, a subplot emerges. Excerpts are included from Sam's metaphoric novel in which a pregnant man tries to solve the mystery of his fertility and absolve himself of his past. Then tragedy strikes the Pinskys, which is her last name, her family, and they must draw together, tentatively realizing that they will continue to spin off in their own orbits unless they begin the hard work of forgiveness themselves. So definitely a uh, very family oriented literary fiction, which typically family sagas or family difficulty is not really my favorite, but it does have just like such 
interesting summary vibes and I love that it juxtapositions the plot against this novel that she's working on and it did say blatantly in the plot description that's very metaphoric and that's the stuff I like. I want metaphors, I want to think, I want to like piece things together myself. I definitely want more of like an abstract story where things aren't necessarily like handed right to us or spoon fed um so I'm really looking forward to this one. So I was debating between starting this when I went to the park, but the other book that I got, I very, I, I really surprised myself with this one, my friends. I really surprised myself. I started reading this book while I was in the shop and really fell in love with the writing style, which surprises me because I've been, I've been on this channel talking very recently about how much I love uh, female narrators, female authors, uh, LGBTQ plus authors, characters, things like that, and kind of steering away from like the toxic masculine characters and authors I think of immediately as like Stephen King. Another one that I read that had like a Stephen King kind of vibe was like Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. Uh, so what I got is kind of similar, <laughs> uh, but it, the writing style is really cool and I really like it. The book cover is not it, my friends. I will say I'm not a fan of this cover art at all, but it's the spine that attracted me when I was looking through it. And this is Rides of the Midway by Lee Durkee. Such a fascinating plot. I'm really excited for this one. I actually do feel like I might jump into this just because it sounds like very absurdist, very ridiculous, like summertime sadness vibes. And I, I feel like that's it. It's a little bit more chunky than what I typically read as of late. I feel like I've been really steering towards shorter books lately, but I don't know, this feels really intriguing to me. So I actually might start this soon. So this says it's a part murder mystery, part ghost story, part homage to the messy, unwilling vision quest, otherwise known as adolescence and it follows a teenager named Noel and he sees ghosts and he's an insomniac he also does a lot of drugs and he is a suspected mercy killer his life is a guilt-ridden carnival ride a blur of drugs ghosts and erotic photography after a little league accident in which he knocks the opposing catcher into a fatal coma Noel grows up haunted not only by the ghost of the comatose boy, but also by the spirit of his own father, a POW lost in Vietnam. Darkly comic and lyrically moving, this novel introduces a formidable new talent in contemporary fiction. So it is definitely blurbed on the back as saying tender, hallucinatory, comforting numbness of drugs and the terrifying clarity of his visions, coming of age story, very complex boy to man characters, mercifully unsentimental and quite funny. And this is a debut novel. Actually, when did this even come out? 2001. Holy cow, this came out in 2001. So we shall see how I feel about it. Those are the books I got, my friends. So thank you so much for coming along. I know this is just like a short little fun video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you'd like more stuff like this, like just like a little tiny baby field trip, uh, like a field trip video. You know, I actually really enjoy doing those. It's very simple. It's just a lot of fun for me. Yeah, so thank you so much for being here, friends. I hope you're doing really, really well. I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye. <laughs> he always has to have the last word.